is the 12-team playoff the reason why Ryan Day snagged quality talent out of the transfer portal? You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 2024 brings a lot of new things to college football, one of them being a new playoff format. And I think that's a big reason why Ryan Day used the portal this year the way that he did. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Thursday edition of Locked on Buckeyes here on Thursday, January 25th in the year 2024. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. When any person that is a college football fan hears 12-team playoff or similar playoff in general, they're going to do some thoughts that go through their head. They might be in favor of the new format. They might be strongly opposed to the new format but whatever it is that word playoff 12 team 14 18 16 team whatever it is the playoff word brings different emotions to us and thoughts into our head and i think and i believe ryan day had the playoff in mind when he decided to go out there in the portal to get a lot of quality players to bring them to columbus ryan day has used a portal in a different way than normal this offseason and I love it. I love what he has done. You go out there and get a, a kid from a local school in Ohio, a local school, Ohio College, and the Ohio Bobcats, a tight end, Wilkek Mark. What do you have? No more Cade Stover. Do you think G. Scott Jr. is ready to start? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't really think he is, but maybe that's all season he can prove that. There's more competition there for that to happen. Jelani Thurman, do you believe in him or do you not believe in him? I mean, he's a he was a true freshman. So I don't really know what to expect when he's on the field consistently full-time. So go out there, get somebody, done a little bit, prove it himself, and bring that guy up to the Buckeyes level. Go out there, get another running back. What did you have this year? Mayan Williams off to the NFL. Evan Pryor hit the portal. Chip Trainum hit the portal. You got two of your five top – two of your top five backs from last year are still on the team. Dallin Hayden, red-shirted, Trevian Henderson – injury prone so what do you go out there and do get the best back in the sec not mad about it you're bringing in quality players but also you got went out and get you got will howard to be your qb1 but then you go out there and get julian sand who was your number one quarterback on your current recruiting cycles board for that position so now you have a veteran quarterback coming in you have a really talented quarterback coming in as a true freshman then you go out there and get Caleb Downs, a guy who you were high on in recruiting when he was in high school, but now he's available. You go get him as well, pull him from Georgia, and then Seth McLaughlin instantly fills a need on the Ohio State roster. Now, yes, they all feel needs, but also when you think about the new playoff format, what do you have? Possibility of a fifth, excuse me, a 16th game. Possibility. Let's just say that Ohio State and the Buckeyes don't get a buy as one of the top four. To, well, this format isn't really cemented yet, so it could change. But let's just say the proposed format is you get, I believe there's so much going back and forth of this. Some say it's approved. Some say it's not. Let's act like it is. The top four conference champions get a buy in the upcoming playoff. Great. Cool. Let's say Ohio State, for some odd reason, does not get that in a particular year. What do they do? They play a first-round game at home. Then you go to the semifinal round and the championship. So you're thinking about Buckeyes playing possibly 15 games, possibly 16 games to win a college football playoff national championship. What does Ohio State need on their roster? Not just depth, quality depth. Offensive line, I wouldn't be mad if they went out there and got three or four more guys. I, I understand it would shake things up. Ruffle some feathers if you, when you do it in the later portal window. But what is it? You got to have depth on your team because if not, you might get bounced out of the first round of the playoff, and that would not be a good look if you're Ohio State. You don't get the bye. You play at home in the shoe first round of the playoff, and what happens? You get bounced out. Not good for you. 
not good for you at all. But what do we find here? Ryan Day is realizing, hey, we can instantly boost our defense by bringing in Caleb Downs. Great. Go ahead and do it. We can make our offense better by bringing in Will Howard and uh, uh, Keck Mark at tight end and Quinshawn Judkins. But what do you do when you bring in Judkins? You bring in depth. What do you do when you do that? You allow your top two backs to not have to tote the rock 225, 230 times in a season. Spread the wealth, share things around a little bit, and it keeps guys healthy for the longer, grueling season. Now, maybe Ryan Day is tapping into the NFL mindset here and saying, look, we understand that at Ohio State in college football, your best players are going to play. But what do you find in the NFL? Now, I'm not just saying with the backup quarterback fiasco, and well, it's not really fiasco, how many backup quarterbacks are playing in the NFL right now, which is a high mark. It's happened before. I have my own thoughts about that that I don't have enough time here during this show to discuss, but I do see a trend in the NFL that there are a lot of backup quarterbacks playing for whatever reason. A lot of it is due to injury. But you think about the NFL and how there are now 17, yeah, 17 regular season games, almost almost long track, lost track. It's been, what, 16 most of my life, and now it's 17 regular season games with the thought that eventually, probably within the next three years, no later than five, it'll be 18 regular season games. And what are we looking at? Well, you better have a fourth and a fifth wide receiver because you know one of your top three guys might go down. When you say fourth and fifth, we know they're on the roster, but how good are they? What kind of quality athlete are they? What kind of quality player are they? What do they bring to the table when they are on the field? Same thing goes with the offensive line and with the defensive line and linebackers. You got to add depth. You have to bring in more quality players. Now, it's a benefit if you're able to go out there and get Will Howard and go out there and get Julian Sane and go out there and get Judkins and the others. It's a benefit for you to be able to do that. But at the same time, but I do think, well, one, because it was Michigan, talk more about that situation, what's going on in Ann Arbor later in the show, one cause is Michigan losing three straight years to them, being one and three against your rival. That's not good. No Big Ten Conference championships since 2020. That's not good. No one playoff appearance since 2020. You go, you make the playoff in 2020 and 2019, no playoff appearance in 2021, make it in 2022 and not again this year. Uh, there's a lot of things that are training in Ryan Day's way as far as postseason and accomplishing the goals that the team has verbally said are their goals every single season. So with all that in mind, I do believe the playoff is a big implication about why Ryan Day went this hard, harder than normal with the transfer portal. It's there. People like myself have been saying do it before. The playoff is going to be expanded. You don't need to play. say, hey, we're going to play one more game, potentially one more game, two and a natty. Oh, that one more game is going to cause this type of effect. That should not be something that needs to happen. However, that's where we are right now with this sport. Ryan Day, I like what you've done so far. I enjoy what you've done so far. Bring in the quality athletes that you have brought in. I really hope Ryan Day does more of this in the spring. Now, a little bit different. Got less time if you do it in December or January than if you do it in March or April or May. Bringing guys in, getting them acclimated to the culture, getting them up to speed with the playbook and the strength and conditioning. It's a whole lot harder at that point in the year. However, if you see somebody out there in the spring that you think can make you better instantly, you know what I say, got to go out there and snag him, which is why I think Ryan Day should keep this mindset and how he's utilizing the transfer portal going forward. I'll dive into more. I'll dive into that more next here on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride 
every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. This episode is brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. Billiards Plus also has more cues than anyone in Ohio. They can fix your billiards woes in their shop that is on site. They're truly the class of their field. Everything you need for in-home and backyard entertainment is at Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, all in Canada, Billiards and more. And the grills, whether you like charcoal, like myself, or gas or wood-fired, Billiards Plus has the perfect set for all grillers. They are family-owned and operated. And when you talk to the staff at Billiards Plus, you know you're talking to an expert who won't steer you wrong. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will always go above and beyond to give you the best customer service in the industry. And check out some of their new games in stock now. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on the YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on the YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel found only at the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I really, really hope that what we are seeing right now from Ryan Day is a sign of things to come. Now, we all realize if things happen the Saturday after Thanksgiving, the same thing has happened the past three years, Ryan Day might not see the next Monday as the Buckeyes head coach. I'm not saying might not see it like he's going to be gone, like someone's going to take him out. I'm not saying that, but I think it's clear and easy to say that if he doesn't see, if he doesn't win that game, he might not be the Buckeyes head coach that coming Monday, a couple of days later. I think that's clear. But I do think this one thing needs to continue. Utilize a portal in this way every single time it is open. Not every offseason, not just one time, get it, get it in one time and you're done. No, not going that far. One thing I am going to say, though, is this. Ryan Day needs to be this guy. Is this Ryan Day using the portal the same way that he was coaching against, against Georgia? Now, unfortunately, it was a loss, and there was a kick at the end of the game that literally the book guys entered 2023, and it really sad fashion it was not good it wasn't good at all but if this is ryan day using the portal and this is this that aggressive version of ryan day now y'all better watch out y'all better watch out this isn't no psa a public service announcement no uh, maybe let's turn it into, into a psa if y'all let ryan day do this now y'all better watch out and see what happens in the season when Day taps into these players and gets them to play the best ball of their lives. It can happen. The way that the current coaching staff is made up, what do we have and what do we see? You have a former head coach in Jim Knowles, who's your defensive coordinator. You got a former head coach in Bill O'Brien, who's your offensive coordinator. One thing I have loved, and I don't think that I have verbalize it enough on this show that is my apologies i'll start doing it now if ryan day takes anything from nick saban and i hope he takes a lot from Saban, but if he takes one thing right now that could instantly help this team in the upcoming season it's the hire of guys that used to be head coaches 
that know how to run an entire football program at the collegiate level and at the NFL level in Bill O'Brien's case, that, hey, they're comfortable only leading the side of the ball that is their expertise. Saban had Kiffin. Saban had Sarkeesian. Saban had a lot of guys that were former head coaches to run now the offense. I want to say Charlie Strong's on the on that coaching staff too. Um, don't quote me on that because I don't, I don't know their coaching staff top to bottom verbatim like I do Ohio State's. However, I want to say Charlie Strong is on that coaching staff too. What's Charlie Strong? A former head coach who is what? Good at one side of the ball. Man, Ryan Day, I, I, I dig it. Be- and there's a, there's a reason why. It's not just saying, like, this is what Jay's preference is. It's a preference with uh, some belief and some backing and some facts to back it up. If Ryan Day wants to be able to oversee the entire program, be able to better manage the roster, be able to figure things out better with the entire football team in mind, what is one thing he needs from his OC, from his DC? Somebody that can come in, instantly grasp the room, and instantly take over that side of the ball. That is their expertise. Jim Knowles, the defense. Brett O'Brien, the offense. And I understand there's an offensive coordinator. There's a co-OC. This is not like Urban Meyer's co-OC, co-OC when he was in Columbus, which I thought was one of the dumbest things he could have done. You got two offensive coordinators and their co-OCs. It was stupid. Bill O'Brien's coming in with the OC title, not a co-OC. So now it's not just saying Bill O'Brien and Brian Hartline, they're equals. No, there's a clear hierarchy here. Bill O'Brien is 1A in this situation. Hartline is 1B. There's two things Ryan Day might be trying to accomplish here. One bringing a guy in that can run the entire offense. It's Ohio State's offense, but Bill O'Brien's running it, allowing Ryan Day to have his hands in more things. But also, also, let's not forget, Brian Hartline's still there, holding the co-OC tag, which means that at some point in time, he's going to be more hands-on and learning from a guy who is not the head coach of the football team. He is the head coach of the offense, and Hartline could glean a little bit and learn a little bit or a lot from Bill O'Brien in this moment. So not only am I pleased with the aggressiveness of day in the portal, and I hope it stays, I hope it's a trend that we see year after year after year, assuming or if day is the church, is the church. Wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. Heard a podcast about that word, and all of a sudden now it's coming into the show. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect that to happen today. But assuming Day is still the coach, there we go, right, C-word, of the football team, hey, keep this up. Keep this aggressive nature up. Why? Because I think it's the best formula for the Buckeyes to make some postseason noise in the upcoming season. Coming up next, y'all watching the YouTube, see it, hardball to the NFL, question mark? (laughs) We'll dive into that question there next here on Locked on Buckeyes. Jimbo was gone, not Jimbo Fisher, Jimbo Harbaugh. Every time I think about Harbaugh and his annoyance and some of the things that he does, I just say Jimbo. That's just what I what I do. Sometimes he, sometimes he says things, I think Jimbo. Sometimes he does things, I think Jimbo. I, I don't know, just the word that comes to my mind. But Jim Harbaugh, as reported by Adam Schefter of the ESPN, has taken the head coaching job of the LA Chargers. This is a man who's been flirting with the NFL for a long time. Remember last year, somebody on the Instagram, or maybe it was a couple years ago, when Harbaugh was interviewing for the Vikings job. And he said, oh, this is the last time he's chasing the NFL. Last time, last time, last time. And what do we find? Every off season, Harbaugh is interviewing for an NFL coaching job. And honestly, I almost don't blame him. When you are at the school he is at, they're not letting him go. They're not going to fire him with what he is doing based off what he did when he first got to the school and couldn't beat Urban. What happened? Stayed there, stayed there, stayed there. Now what do you have? Team that has won the national championship. First time they won a non-split national championship since 1948. 
put that in there for context. They'll tell you they've won two national championships since the late 90s until now. No, they won a half in 97. I think I believe Nebraska won the other one, which I still think Nebraska's the 97 national champion for numerous reasons. But now they got one here. Great, cool, whatever. That's what you got. Now, um, it's not, you know, not on Ohio, still not on doing what Ohio State has done over the past 20 years, 25 years. No, absolutely not. But what they have done recently, I'm not gonna try to like be it use bias here. It's been somewhat impressive in how they've used the portal, how they have built that team. Yes, they have cheated. I'm not gonna get away from this. Yes, they have cheated. Yes, they have. But Harbaugh to the NFL seems like it's a good fit. I think Harbaugh is going back to the NFL for a few reasons. He wants to be there, doesn't have the restrictions that he has at Michigan as far as roster management and NIL and talking to boosters and all of those things, transfer portal, the recruiting. You don't have a lot of those things at the NFL level. I think he's an NFL coach. His brother, John, who actually the Chargers and the Ravens are going to play in the upcoming season. Um, Zach Gelb of CBS Sports Radio said, hey, this has – Thanksgiving written all over it. And trust me, if I'm the NFL, you either make that week one or Thanksgiving, or if they want to dominate Christmas once again, go ahead and put that on Christmas. Whatever you got to do to put the hardballs on prime time, go ahead and make that thing happen. What does this mean for Michigan? What does it mean for Ohio State? Am I pleased Harbaugh is gone? Absolutely. Like, he, yes. At the same time, do I think Ryan Day has your own more? Number? No, absolutely not. Think about this. Sharon Moore knew how to attack Ohio State's defense. Got caught cheating. You fire Stallions. You fire LB coach. You're trying to change things up to cover whatever. Cool. And Sharon Moore is the offensive line coach. One thing that Michigan has done in games that they beat Michigan, uh, Ohio State recently is they have dominated in the trenches. Now, we all see what happened on the defensive line. What doesn't get all the attention is what they've done on the offensive line during that same stretch. That's a battle, man. I I don't know what Sharon Moore's offseason tactics are going to be or what he'll be as a coach over the next five years, but my gut says Sharon Moore, OC at Michigan, will eventually be Michigan's head football coach over the next few years, especially because I don't believe Ward Manuel wants to go on and do a full, long, extensive uh, coaching search you want to hire from within it's going to allow you to keep more guys in because you know michigan players you got 30 days the portal is open for you once again this is right before spring practice now i understand someone said maybe harbaugh did this so michigan retained your own more so there was no um so so you you do it too early all of a sudden you got all these guys going after him maybe what do you have you have guys that are starting their winter workouts, but also are going to be starting spring practice really, 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 really soon. I'm going to see what happens here. I'm going to see how this thing unfolds. I wonder, and I was not thinking about going here, but I got to. It's contact with everything. I wonder if Harbaugh is expecting him to mi- expecting to miss six to eight games in the upcoming season. For one infraction, remember, he's getting investigated for two Harbaugh is by the NC2A. One of them was the multiple infractions via recruiting infractions during the COVID dead period. Some people will say it's all about him buying the kid a recruit a hamburger. I don't believe it is all about that. There are other things Michigan did that broke rules during that period, the COVID dead period that go into why he was getting investigated. I don't believe that investigation would have been as long if he just complied and didn't lie, but he lied during an investigation based off reports. And I think that's why the NC2A did not accept the proposed suspension, four-game suspension that Michigan proposed to the NC2A. I think Harbaugh could get six to eight games for that one recruiting infraction during the COVID dead period that is still under investigation on top of the Connor Stallions and the sign stealing scheme that they were doing. That's the best. I'm, I get tired of the word scheme, just to be honest with you. I didn't want to say scandal because I think it's no. They were cheating. They got caught cheating over a, what, three years period? Got caught this year, into this year, all that stuff. But however, I truly wonder, and I really wonder if Harbaugh is expecting 
hey, he might miss a year to a year and a half of football and college football for stealing signs and cheating. I don't I don't really know if they're going to take away their trophy. However, if you get caught cheating and the NC2A says, oh, well, no, nope, we're, we're not going to punish you for it. Do you know how many people down there in the South will say, oh, they doing that up there in Ann Arbor and they getting punished? Woo-hoo. Hey, bro. Hey, you know the thing? We moved, we moved up in the, in the lab when we were like in third grade way back in the day. Hey, get that notepad out. Hope you still got to get that pen out. Got to use some new age tactics to go out there and steal these signs. We know it might be illegal, but if you ain't going to punish Michigan and Harbaugh, you ain't going to punish us either. Enough said. So I really wonder if Harbaugh's potential long ex- suspension is why he's going back to the NFL now. However, the Chargers, you got Justin Herbert. You got a nice stadium. You're, you're back. He's back with the program that he used to play for. So that's another thing as well. Harbaugh's going from Michigan, where he played at, where he went to school, back to a school, a team in the NFL that he played at and knows, well, it was San Diego back then. But you, you all understand, a lot of ties here with Harbaugh and where he is going to play right, coach right now. He's gone. What does it mean for Ryan Day in the upcoming game against Michigan? If you lose this game, hey, it's not a good look, bro. It's not a good look at all. That's all I'm going to say. Up out of time. Going to have a lot more good stuff coming your way here soon on tomorrow's show. Going to try to do some recruiting early next week to get you up to date on what's going on with Buckeye recruiting right here on Locked On Buckeyes. You can follow me on X at jstevens07. Send all emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. We're out here on a Thursday, Buckeye fans. We will see you next time.